We definitely know that black holes exist. We've seen the gravitational waves from merging black holes, and we've even imaged supermassive black holes directly, using the hot material falling into them. However, did you know that we've never actually seen a completely isolated black hole floating through the galaxy? Never, until now that is. In our Milky Way galaxy alone, there are an estimated 100 million lonely black holes floating between the stars without any sort of companion. For the first time, the Hubble Space Telescope has conclusively identified one of these isolated black holes. Not only did we see it, but the teams involved also measured the mass of this black hole as well. These isolated black holes are typically between a few and a few tens of times the mass of our Sun, and they form from the remnants of large, dying stars. The supernova at the end of a star's life is a huge explosion, and the remnant core can often collapse to form a black hole. These explosions can often be an asymmetric process, which can then propel the black hole out of the explosion and shoot it through the galaxy to wander as an isolated hole in space. This newly found one is about 5,000 light years away, and it's traveling through the galaxy at 160,000 kilometers per hour. That's fast enough to reach the moon from the Earth in just three hours. But how do you even find an isolated black hole? Which remember, are completely invisible and they give out zero light. We usually either find these black holes by the gravitational waves given out in a merger between two of them, which we can't do here because an isolated black hole has nothing to merge with. Or sometimes we can see a black hole interacting with a companion star and eating it up. But that also doesn't apply here. We've even managed to image supermassive black holes directly, using the hot matter falling into them to create a shadow where the black hole is. But these stellar mass black holes roaming the galaxy would A, be too small for that to work, and B, isolated here means no accretion disk either. So again, that doesn't apply. Instead, we had to use a process called microlensing. This is due to the warping of space-time that the super dense black hole will cause and it leads to the brightening of any luminous object that passes perfectly behind that black hole from our point of view. You can see this process yourself using a stemmed glass. The density of the glass here warps the light coming from the piece of paper I'm passing it over. And in just the same way, the density of a black hole warps the light path of light coming from distant stars behind the black hole. The result is a brightening of those stars and a slight change in the location and shape of the star on the sky. And that's exactly what we're looking for. The amount of brightening is tightly related to the mass of the black hole doing the lensing. And that's how we find out the mass of these black holes. It also tells us about the distance to and velocity of the black hole. So the lensing data contains loads of useful information. Of course, it's not just black holes that can cause lensing events. Anything heavy could do it, even other stars. There are two things here that tells us the event we saw was likely a black hole though. Firstly, black hole lensing events typically last a couple hundred days, while lensing by stars is much shorter lived. This is due to the large size of the star. So just looking at the timings here, tell us that it can't have been a big old star doing the lensing. Also, the color of the light received tells us information too. If another star is causing the lensing, then we usually see the color of the light we receive change during the event. This is because the starlight from both of the stars mixes and it changes what we see. For black hole lenses though, we don't get any additional light from the black hole, and hence there's no color change, and that's what we saw here. So this sounds pretty easy, right? We just look at a load of stars, wait for some brightening to occur at a random time because this can't be predicted, and then we measure the mass using that brightening. That's exactly what two teams did do here, but it's not as easy as it sounds. They had to use ground-based telescopes to watch millions of stars towards the central bulge of the Milky Way. And when they saw something interesting, they fire up the Hubble Space Telescope and they take a closer look. This incredible space telescope can measure the deflected and brightened starlight incredibly precisely, seeing the star move by less than the height of a human lying on the moon, as seen from Earth. For the particular event we're talking about here, the background star was 19,000 light years away, and the lensing lasted for an impressive 270 days, but it took years to do the complicated analysis to confirm the discovery. As I mentioned before, there were two teams that used Hubble data to study this new event, and they both confidently saw the presence of a very compact object, although the measurements they made do differ very slightly. 
One team in Baltimore measured the mass to be seven times the mass of our sun, while the other team in Berkeley reported a lower mass, closer to between 1.6 and 4.4 solar masses, meaning that while the object is still likely to be a black hole, it could also be a neutron star. The transient nature of these microlensing events mean that follow-up work is almost impossible to do, but more analysis of the existing data could clear up this disagreement in the future. Either way though, this is much lighter than the black holes we typically detect through mergers, which can go up to a couple of hundred solar masses, and the supermassive black holes imaged here, which are millions or even billions of solar masses. This was a particularly hard measurement to do, because there was a bright foreground star near the lensing event, and so both teams had to remove the interfering bright light from the data. This means it was kind of like trying to see a tiny firefly next to a huge spotlight, and that's why this technique is so difficult, but it's the only way we know of to find these isolated black holes. Hopefully, very soon, this same technique could reveal even more isolated black holes hiding and roaming through the galaxy. So let me know what you think. Are you excited or impressed about this detection, or is it nothing compared to the photos we've already seen from the Event Horizon Telescope? Let me know down below and subscribe on your way out if you're new. Until next time, stay safety. I'll see you soon. Bye!